So, in the last video, at the end of the last video, I showed you how I had scanned my hand inked image and we opened it up in preview and I was showing you how we can clean it up using uh, adjustments. So it's under tools and adjust color. You can also do this in Photoshop with, with image and then image adjustments like levels. So I'm just going to use the level sliders quickly. I'm going to push the white slider that's on the right all the way over to past the mountain. And that will give me pure white so that the only things left are things darker than 50% gray. And then you'll see the dark slider. I can move that towards the middle until the lines are the thickness I want. But I don't want to go too far <laughs> or it will cross itself and invert, right? And I don't want to go so far that all of my smooth inking becomes a stair-stepped kind of bit-mapped edge. I want a little bit of that gray. And so the more I shift these, the more it might break my lines. So basically you're hovering around the middle. You don't need to shift that mid-tone one really at all. And you can see how clean that is at 650 pixels per inch when it gets to your your full image. But it's not as clean as a vector. So we're going to then turn this into a vector in the next step, which we would do with our Photoshopped inking as well. Even though this is a lot cleaner because it's all done with digital tools, we still want to turn this into a vector. And we're going to use the same process, whether we scan it or whether we inked it in Photoshop. And then I'll show you how you can actually ink it right in Illustrator as well, which is very similar to inking in Photoshop. We just use a new tool called the blob brush. So I've cleaned this up. The scan is there, but there's little blobs and things from hand inking. I can also take the saturation all the way down because there's a little bit of, sometimes inks will be like a brown black or a blue black. This was a blue-black, and so when a little bit of it gets kind of pulled up from the, from the edge of the backing board, you'll get a little drop shadow. That drop shadow will have some color to it, so I can take that out. And it's just trying to get a clean raster image. Okay, so that's good. And now I've got a very clean scan. Right? But I still get the, that kind of slightly rough edge that Illustrator is going to take care of. And then there's little blips from my hand inking, especially right here and here, that I'll need to clean up. And if I want to, I can clean that up in Photoshop before I bring it into Illustrator. So I would do that by opening the scan up in Photoshop. So there are all ways to get to digital inking, clean digital ink at the end of the day but they might look very different. And notice that this is slightly tilted just because I scanned it slightly tilted. But I'm going to use my brush, but instead of using black, I'm going to reverse it so it's solid white. And I'm going to use it basically the same ways I was inking with black, with 100% hardness, with a pressure sensitive, in this case, brush. Because I'm keeping it all on one layer, but I'm basically cleaning anything that, that got outside of it within reason. Let me go a little smaller here. And I'm doing this with my brush rather than my eraser because an eraser will just take the pixels away. I want a clean black and white image in order to bring into Illustrator. Also, even though the, the eraser and the brush tool are almost identical in Photoshop, I don't think the eraser tool has smoothing, if I remember. Oh, no, it does. Never mind. <laughs> and it's nice to have smoothing turned on here for erasing. They've added smoothing to all these tools. I might even like a little bit of this, these kind of digital artifacts from the hand inking. Because when they become vectors, it will become kind of digital noise. It will make it look more retro, more hand done, ironically. 
because it's all just pixels at the end of the day. So I could get really perfectionist if I wanted to in cleaning this up in Photoshop. Remember, it's all just pixels. Whether you draw it in Photoshop like this with white behind or whether you scan it in. I'm a little bit faster hand drawing, so when it has as many lines like this and as many curves, hand inking works. But I think you can see how digital inking can also work. I think that's all I really need to do. I can fix the rest in Illustrator. And some of the same kind of weirdness and variations that you get from digital inking, like I went pretty far outside my sketch on some of these, that happens with hand inking too. That's just part of inking. Okay, now I save it just as a JPEG. I can just keep it as my scan, but I often call these test files. So I'm going to save it as my test tiger to my desktop, just as a JPEG. Black and white. Now I can see it on my desktop. Once it comes in, Try that again. So I don't see it on the desktop. Oh, it went to downloads. There it is, Test Tiger. So I'm going to drag that out to my desktop. Now notice I started with a pencil sketch that I edited in Photoshop. Now I have my inks. And it might not seem like a dramatic step, but this is what we digitally color. You want the cleanest line art possible. Digitally coloring behind this would be a mess because there's just a bunch of stray little dots everywhere and stray colors. But to get it even cleaner than this, I'm now going to do this extra step, which we're all going to do because we're extra professional. And you'll see it in the directions for the assignment. Because we're using Adobe products, we get Illustrator. And part of the project is to change it not into just line art or line work, but into vector line art. And you can see in this example, these are very fine lines, but you can actually see the reason I include this one is it's all a vector. And this is a guy on Behance who's really good at these spot illustrations. And this line art is all a vector. And you can see that, and he proves it by showing you <laughs> the vector layer with all the anchors, right? Because that is the cleanest you can get with lines. So that might be his pencil sketch, but then, then he traces it into a vector like this to get that clean line art, which we want for, for spot illustrations. Okay, so how do we do that? We take our tiger, just as a JPEG. We close Photoshop. Then we find that test tiger and we open that with Illustrator. It's like how we opened our sketch for our logo in Illustrator, but this time we're opening a high resolution scan. It comes in and Illustrator knows immediately that this is not a vector file. So when we click on it with our large selection tool, it selects the whole thing. And then we go to properties. And then we go to a tool called Image Trace. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see what it's doing. And when I hit Image Trace, it's going to give me a bunch of options of defaults. We want to use black and white logo. And that's just going to be the best for lots of reasons. It's the only one we use in this class. But we don't want to just take it as it is, because what it's actually doing right now is previewing it as a vector. So if I hit Command Z, you'll see the difference it makes. That's the scan, as bumpy as it is, but at least all the lines are solid. Right? And then I go to Image Trace and I say black and white logo, and then this is just its default. But I can improve upon that by clicking on, and I need to, clicking on the advanced options, which is right here. This is under Properties in the sidebar of Illustrator. And when I get to the advanced image trace options, I want to open up advance and I want to say ignore the white because we don't want white vector shapes. We only want the black shapes. 
And then I can actually play with what's called the threshold. And this is worth playing with. Because the less I'm tolerant of it, the thinner my lines will get. So if I have, if everything just feels a little too thick, I can choose a lower threshold in its interpretation. And then it will clean them up. And then with paths, I can say fewer paths. And that will help smooth it out. So you see now those straights look a lot more straight, even though they're still hand drawn. Yes, I will. So let me finish up this one and then I'll do the whole thing again. So I'll still get these little mistakes every once in a while that I'll have to fix. But this is a lot cleaner than it was before. And then corners, I can say, have fewer corners. And then it will round off certain things. It just depends on your design. Since mine's very kind of clean and graphic, I can get away with the computer uh, simplifying a lot of the stuff. And then noise, noise isn't really much of an issue for me. I don't have little stray marks, but I'm going to say I want to allow less noise by the by vector shapes need to be at least, you know, 90 pixels to be included. And I shouldn't lose anything. Yeah. All right. Now there's a little gap there that I'll have to clean. There are still those little things there. But if I'm happy with it, this is still not a vector. You don't see the anchor points. In order to finalize this, I have to go back to that sidebar under properties, and I have to click expand. And now it is a vector. And not only is it a vector, it's vector line art. That when I move it onto the black, is just there. And then I get to clean it up as a vector. But first, let me save it. So I'm going to save as, and I'm going to save it onto my computer as an EPS file because I'm going to move it back into Photoshop. But this will allow me also to still work with it in Illustrator. It's no longer a test. It is now my vector line art. It's, an, it's a vector file format that can move between. Think of it as a portable vector format. Because you can't open Illustrator files in Photoshop, but you can't open EPS files. And then you want to keep all of the, the EPS defaults. So as asked, I'm going to walk through that, those, all those steps again, and then I'm going to come back and clean this up. And I'll, I'll use the pencil tool and some other tools to show you. Okay, so what do I do? I take my, my best clean scan image that's saved as a JPEG. You could also save it as a PNG. And I'm going to open that in Illustrator. So I right click and I say open with, not Photoshop, but Illustrator. Once it opens in Illustrator, don't do anything except go to your large selection tool and then click on it. When you click on it, the default for Illustrator is just, it just highlights the outside of your raster file. So then on the sidebar, you click on properties. And if you don't see it, you can also go to window and you can find, let's see where it is, image trace under window as well. But it's also right here under properties. Now, whether you do it here or under the image trace window, you're going to need the image trace window. You're going to pick the default, the preset, and we're going to use black and white logo. Now I'll zoom in. And then it will do its, its best guess at what looks good. But then you can define all of these things under the advanced settings. And if this isn't open and you don't want to get to it from window and image trace, you can also get to it by clicking here. And that will open this up. So if this is closed, you pick your default black and white logo, and then you do it here. So it's all about getting clean black shapes. The thing you all need to click, or you're going to have issues when you try to color it, is you want to say ignore whites. So it's not saving any white vector shapes. And then you mess with these settings. It's just a preview. Make sure preview is checked until it looks good. From your threshold on down through your paths, your corners, your noise. Until it looks as clean as you want. Maybe I'll make this one a little bit thicker. 